Okay, what I want to do here, guys, is I want to know what's the dis distance between these two points right there. Okay, I want to know what the distance is. So I can use the distance formula, but we haven't even been exposed to it yet. Asterisk. Asterisk. Yes. <laughs> um, we have been, we, it's this little symbol. This star. We have been exposed to it, but not formally. That means I haven't said this is a distance formula, write this down, use this. But we actually have used it. We used it in this chapter, and I want one of you to tell me what it is uh, in a while, in a, in a bit. So don't give it to me yet. Okay, now, how many of you guys can give me the distance between, well, between these two points right here? How many of you can tell me between this point and that point? And if you want to look at your uh, little grid, you can actually count the number of units. And how many units would it be? Three. three. So this would be three. What would it be from this point to that point? Seven. Seven, okay. So we have our three, we have our seven. But can you just count the number of units with this dark line? No, you can't. I wish you could, because then the problem would just be one, two, three, and just count it up, you, you'll be done. Okay, but we can use a theorem to figure this one out. Josh? All right, here I'm going to put the Pythagorean theorem. What lesson was that from? Yeah, dash one is the first lesson in this chapter. So you have a test on Friday. It'd be nice to know what dash one was about, right? This is a review. Okay. Josh said a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That's correct. Uh, question. Go ahead. Sorry. We normally do, but this is a short test. Uh, sorry, short chapter. So again, we will have a time for a quiz. Unfortunately. I'm going to call this a. I'm going to call this b. I'm going to call this c. So, do you guys remember a right triangle has two? legs and one hypotenuse, all right? That's a right triangle. Okay, what was the distance of A? Three, you guys told me it was three and you counted it and I trust your counting. And what was the distance of B? Seven, and again, you counted, you got that right. And we could not count C, so we're gonna use the Pythagorean theorem. So nine plus 49 equals C squared. And then I add these two together, I get my 58 equals C squared, but I don't want C squared, I want C. C. So what do I do to both sides here? Now, some of you have been bringing this up periodically, which is good. When I square rooted both sides, I actually came up with two answers, and what were the two answers? Positive the square root of 58 and negative the square root of 58. But which one is the only acceptable answer today positive. in this problem? Why is it positive? Why not the negative? Can't have a negative sign. Good. There's no negative distance on a triangle. Good. So the square root of 58 equals C. And uh, this is a review to help you guys to think and have good number sense. What's the square root of 58? Roughly, raise your hand. Don't tell me what it is out loud. How many of you can get? What's the square root of 58 about? So try to do an estimate real quick. All right. How many of you would say... That value is above 7. It's above 7. How many of you say it's above 8? Okay, good. So right now it's between 7 and 8. Okay, how many of you would say it's closer to 7? How many of you say it's closer to 8? So how many say closer to 7? Closer to 8? Is it really closer to 8 or a little bit closer to 8? So using that knowledge, it's somewhere like in here, maybe a little bit closer to 8. Uh, what's an estimate? Raise your hand to the tenths place, tenths place. Lesby? 7.6. Anyone have something different? Oh, he's going hundreds. Okay. Um, the answer to that, because I got this off the top of my head, uh, it, was, um, it was about 7.62. It's in your book. How many of you, how many of you, yeah, it's just number well, I sense. I promise you I did not see No, 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 it's okay. I just, I wanted you guys to try. How many of you can at least get between seven and eight? Like you can look at this and say, it's about seven, between seven and eight. How many of you can go as close to the middle of seven and eight? 
maybe leading more toward eight, just a little bit more toward eight. Okay, that's because this number means something. So when I look back at the original problem, this is three, this is seven. You guys realize that's just a little bit above seven? Okay, that's all it's saying. So you have context, you have some meaning to the number. Okay, that's Pythagorean theorem, which I like, and I hope you guys know how to use. But I'm talking about the distance formula, and let's see if you guys can find out how they relate. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you the distance formula, and you can write it down on your paper. It's D equals, and this one's kind of complicated, but you'll see it's actually not that bad to work out. D equals the square root of, and I need a lot of space here, but x sub 2 minus x sub 1 squared plus y sub 2 minus y sub 1 squared. Just write it down. Don't, you don't have to understand it yet. We haven't even talked about it in depth yet. But can I ask this question, guys? How many of you remember what x sub 1, x sub 2, y sub 1, y sub 2 maybe mean? Okay, it, it, it refers to slope, but it doesn't have to be slope because here, not slope. Okay, ready, guys? What are we trying to find the distance between? Two points. Can we call this x sub 1, y sub 1, x sub 2, y sub 2? It's just saying you have two x values and two y values. One's here and one is there, one there, one there. Okay, that's all we're saying. Okay. Now you're saying, how in the world does that relate to that? Well, it's actually very closely related. And the whole point of what I'm trying to do right now is to give you, guys, we don't just come up with this stuff and say, you know what? I like square root symbols, but I also like squaring. So let's put them together, put some numbers, and boom, you get a, you get a formula. This formula comes from this theorem. And this theorem comes from actual experience or you can actually look at a triangle measure and you'll get this. So hopefully that makes sense. Do you have a question? Or? You mean C equals D? Very good. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to rewrite this, and this is how you actually work these problems out, so please write this with me. Um, D equals, so I'm trying to find that distance. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace each of these variables with actual numbers. Or what numbers? We're trying Again, we're trying to find between these two right here. I do not want that negative. Okay, so here what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a bracket, parentheses, because I want to distinguish things. And signs matter a lot, guys, a lot. And um, you can work this problem out, and if you switch one little sign, the whole thing, just like you've already noticed, the whole thing gets thrown off. So please don't mess up in that way. Why is it uh, because, it, oh, let me give you an example. In your calculators, you're probably going to use parentheses, parentheses, just parentheses, but imagine me doing this. I mean, that's not bad. It doesn't distinguish what's going on. Your calculators will do more of that. You'll get more used to that next year. Okay, uh, what between these two points right here, and I'll actually write them negative 2, 6, and 5, 3. Okay, what's x sub 2? What's the second x value? 5. Remember x sub 1, y sub 1? x sub 2, y sub 2. Your x and y coordinates. Okay, what's x sub 1? No, negative, two. negative 2. So I'm going to put that right there. Uh, what is uh, y sub 2? 3. What's y sub 1? 6. Okay, just get those numbers where they belong. Now, yeah, this, man, this is, I have a question too. You can go first. Though. Go ahead, yeah. Wait. Oh, yeah. yeah, wait, wait, wait. Wait. Yeah, you're right. But wait. Because I'll get to that. <laughs> oh, 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 I can say. Easy at A. 
All right, stay with me here, guys. So good. We'll we'll come back to that. That is a good point. Um, where was I going here? Oh yes. Can somebody tell me what this distance was without counting the units, without counting the little tick marks? How could you figure that out? X plus two minus one. Three six minus. Okay, good. I think you all you're all getting it. Isn't it just six minus three or three minus six? Yeah. That's right there. So wouldn't this value be worth 3 or negative 3? Okay, how can I find this distance without counting the little marks? Yeah, kind of addition, technically you're doing subtraction. It's negative 2 minus 5 or 5 minus negative 2. 5 minus negative 2. And what would that be? Does anyone know what that is? 7. And wasn't that 7? Okay, so here's our next step. You're gonna just do order of operations to get to figure out what this, and you're like, wait, how do you do order of operations? What is five minus negative two? We already said it. Seven. Seven. So we're gonna do seven, and then we're gonna square that eventually. What's three minus six? Negative three, and then we're gonna square it. Right? Okay, what is seven squared? 49. 49. What's negative three squared? Nine. Uh, What's 49 plus nine? 58. So what do we end up with? I realize why it doesn't look like you switch it up. Uh, seven. It's the same. What? Seven. <laughs> good. Yeah, 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 I like that. That's good. good. I I like like that. Oh, uh, here's the vote now. You can use either one of these. How many of you would pick Pythagorean theorem? I don't even want to look. How many of you would pick distance warm up? Which one's better? Really? Yeah. I like this one. Because that one took us like two seconds. That one didn't take long. Well, this one, this one works with harder ones. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, maybe they don't label the sides. Guys, this is the easier out of the two on this problem because what did I? What did we do for you? We drew a triangle for you. But guys, on these problems, all we're going to give you, two points, figure it out. And you can draw it out, or you could just use a distance formula. And guys, I know this seems like a lot, but it's, it's just a lot of writing for adding and subtracting. That's all you're really doing. Sir, question. Is this always for a right triangle, or is it going to be for algebra? Okay, good question. The distance formula is the distance between two points. Right. <laughs> so it's not talking necessarily about right, obtuse, acute, any triangle. You can do it with any two points. If you're trying to find what's the distance between here and here, the distance formula works. So when does Pythagorean theorem work? Only with right triangles. So we expanded our knowledge with this. We actually made it more useful. And have you ever, I don't know if you've heard this. I've heard this on movies that maybe you guys, have, like The Dark Knight, uh, the Batman movie. Yes. No, okay. So this is what's so funny. When someone does something on, on a movie or TV and they're doing something really complicated, I'm going to triangulate his position. You know what they're doing? They're putting, yeah, they're mashing keys for some reason because that makes it look technical. They're doing an algorithm that puts this into practice many ways. Boom, get the position. That's all they're doing. The reason we call it triangulate is because between two points, one reason. Between two points, what can you form? A you can make a triangle. You can make a triangle. Wait, but you have to make a triangle. Yeah, we'll do some other things. Like okay, this is what we're going to do next. I'm going to look at this distance formula, and you guys had some good questions, and I'm going to answer those if, if you didn't overhear the answer. <clears throat> we have x sub 2 minus x sub 1. And I think one of you asked, can't you just, I mean, is it allowed to be switched? The answer to that is yes. As long as you're subtracting these two values, you're going to be okay. Um, can you switch around the y sub 2, y sub 1? Yeah. Yeah, as long as you subtract, you come up with the same value. But I'm going to put that to the test on the next problem. Let's go to example number 1. And here is where we really don't have an option of which one we want to use. Although, again, you can use Pythagorean theorem, which is good. I like it, too. Find the distance between these two points. All right, 
So I have these two points I want to find. What's the distance between those two points on a um, coordinate plane here? Okay, so I'm going to start off with that distance formula. Uh, I see. And I don't want to do it. Yeah, I, I hope you can see that this has more use than the Pythagorean theorem just by itself. Although, again, like I said, it's based on the Pythagorean theorem. Sorry. Okay, now I'm going to do a certain way. If you want to do it another way, that's okay, but we should match up if we're subtracting correctly. I'm going to do 3 minus 6 and 5 minus 4. Did I subtract the two x values? Did I subtract the two x values here? Yes. Yep, did I subtract the two y values? Yes. Okay, and in the formula, remember how I had x sub 2, x sub 1, y sub 2, y sub 1? Do the x's have to come first? No. No, why not? Because commutative property. Commutative property would come up with the same value. Okay, uh, what's 3 minus 6? Negative 3. Negative 3. What's 5 minus 4? 1. So this is what I'm left with with that first step, simplifying it. What's negative 3 squared? Positive 9. What's 1 squared? 1. What does this end up being? The square root of 10. 10. Now, listen carefully. On your homework, if you can simplify that, like you can factor out a couple 2s, a couple 3s, whatever, then you need to do that. But in this case, can you make that simpler? Yeah. No, what's the factorization of 10? 2 and 5, nothing else comes out. 3.16. Oh, yeah, give me a guess. 3.33. 3.13, It's like 3. Point, come on, guys. It's like 3.1, like maybe six, maybe even like 5.7. That's what I said. Good. Hey, guys, if you're getting close to it, or closer than you did like uh, on Thursday when we had our last class, you're doing well. You're starting to put this. To a lot of people, guys, I'm talking high schoolers and they're seniors. They don't know what that means. I'm like, I want to teach you guys before you get to that point where you're just throwing numbers on a paper. And I don't know. Okay, ready? This is what I'm going to do, guys. I'm going to sketch this out. Three, five, six, four. Three, five, six. Three, five, six, four. So like right here. Oh, wow. The distance between these two points is about... Uh, can we do like 3.2? No. no. That's the distance. Okay. Now, do you see why the Pythagorean theorem could work if I did this? Yes. I could use the Pythagorean theorem if I found A, B, but you did use the Pythagorean theorem. You just have to write it for me. Yeah. You did exactly. You found what this was. It was 1. You found what this was. It was 3. And then you get your 3.2, which is awesome. Which is awesome. Awesome. Yeah. You did use the Pythagorean theorem. Will they give us um, what D equals and then we have to find the other two points? Oh, yeah. Example number two. Oh. No, hold on. Uh, page 739. I just want you guys to do number uh, five. Just make sure you guys are good on this. 739, number five. You work it out on your own, please. Yes. Page 739, number five. You do that one. formula. It's the key. 
for these phones. And you, you get you get it automatic, and eventually you can do it even quicker. I got thirty six point two five. <laughs> five. Oh, yeah, you got <laughs> good. <laughs> okay, hold on, guys, hold on, because I want to go through this. We do have another type of problem, and I want to get through it. Um, remember I said it doesn't matter if you do 6 minus 3 or 3 minus 6, but see, guys, I, I think it does matter. I did 6 minus 3, right? What if What's 3 minus 6? Negative Doesn't that become negative? What's negative 3 squared? Nine. Still 9. Uh, instead of doing 8 minus 4, I did 4 minus 8, which would give me... What's negative 4 squared? Can you do it? Yeah. Reverse? Yeah. Um, this is a nice way to write it so that's consistent, but then you guys understand math well, so you could do it. You could do it the other way. Mix and match. Oh, great question. Can I do, though, 8 minus 3 or 6 minus 4? And that one's no, because you got to have the x's together and the y's together. That's a good question. All right, let's go to example number three. Oh, questions on this one? How many of you can get this? Just use that formula. Okay. Let's go to example number three. Walker, you asked a good question. It's almost like you knew what was coming up. Well, that can't be right. Uh, yeah, wait, hold on. Just, let me read the problem real quick. Find the value of A if the distance between the points with coordinates negative 3, negative 2, and a negative. Oh, that makes sense. Okay, this one is a little more extended, but it's a review problem. After we get through the distance formula, it becomes review of the lessons in this chapter and before that this chapter. Okay, do I have to find the distance? No. You do not. Why not? They gave it to me already. I already have a distance. What I'm trying to find is what is that x, the second x coordinate? I don't know what it is. So we're going to use that distance formula just like we did before. Instead, though, I know that 5 is the distance. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. And this one, you got to be careful because if you mix things up, um, you're just throwing yourself off. And it, it does affect you. And it's a long problem. And it's really sad if you just mix up signs because you weren't careful. It's sad because then you do it all over again. Okay, I'm going to subtract the x values. I have a choice. I can say negative 3 minus a or a minus negative 3. Your choice. Okay, I like the variable first, so a minus negative 3, which, yes, will be a plus 3. And then I'll do it negative 2 minus negative 5 or negative 5 minus negative 2. Fine. We picked that one. Okay. I'm going to simplify the first bracket. A minus negative 3 is A plus 3. I can't add that anymore, but I still have to square it later on. All right. What's negative 5 minus negative 2? Negative 3. Good job. Negative 3. And then I have to square that, right? Okay. Oh, I know what negative 3 squared is. It's nine. positive 9. Do I know what a plus 3 squared is? Yes. <laughs> I don't know off the top of my head always, but I do know it means a plus 3 times a plus 3, right? Isn't that what it has to mean? So what, what process are you going through? Some of you are using 4. Good. I'll get a squared plus 3 squ three a plus 3a, plus 9, right? These two multiply, give me that. Can I add anything together? There's a shortcut. Okay, a squared plus 6a plus 9. Yeah, can I combine these two together? All right, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to combine that because I need to go to the next screen. a squared plus 6a plus 18. And what did that all equal again? Five. So we still have that five. Now I'm kind of stuck. What do I have to do? Close. What do you have to do? I have to square both sides. 
Yeah, so you can multiply it what by itself? <laughs> yes. Yes, that's what he meant. Good. No, yeah, you can multiply both sides by themselves, yeah. which is squaring both sides. Okay, you guys see what I did? All right, now that gets me to this 25, right? 5 squared equals a squared plus 6a plus 20. Um, oh, is it 25? 18, thank you, yes, 18. That's what I get. <laughs> Excuse me? What do you do from here? You could. Okay, listen carefully. Your goal when you have a variable to the second power is to get everything to one side and get zero on the other. So some of you want to subtract, get all of this over there, fine. But I think it's easier to send 25 over by subtracting. You'll be left with zero equals a squared plus 6a minus 7. <coughs> oh, I see what you're saying. But that's, you should still have to get that number over there somehow. So eventually you'll have to do that anyway. But good, yeah, you're thinking. All right. And then... Can that trinomial factor out? All right. It's good. It's good for you. All right. Uh, what are the two numbers that go here? Negative 1 and positive 7. Is that good? So what are the, what are the solutions for A? A equals... Negative seven and one. Okay. That's okay. Yep. Um, when I was up towards the first stage, and it was like twenty five and you got nine, and you squared negative three and you got nine. I did twenty five minus nine. I got sixteen. So I thought the other box would have to add up to four. So then one second. I think what you're saying is uh, true, um, but I think it, does it get you to this? Yeah, and see, again, that's true. That's a true statement, but it, it didn't give you what A was, and that's what you wanted. Oh, you know what? This is actually cool. I think what you're doing is a little bit of a form of our last lesson, tomorrow's lesson. It's called completing the square. That, to a lot of people, is like, it's actually very cool. You can make these into factorable. Remember how there's sometimes where you don't, you can't factor anything, it doesn't factor out well? You can make it factor out. That's completing the square. That's what we're looking at tomorrow. I don't know if you're doing that. And if you are, you're too early. Wait. more new math. Uh, wait, what about trigonometry? Yeah. No, we don't no, need to do it. Trigonometry. Yeah, it's, it's hard to squeeze it in. But I can go over a slightly. Maybe, I think what I want to do, and this is, was what I want to do, is add one little piece each day, just like a uh, one little thing. So let me give you the thing for the day. We're talking about right triangles with, with these uh, trigon trigonometric, they call them, trigonometric ratios. You guys remember, here's A, here's B, and here's C? Yeah. Okay, this is what I need you guys to get down. That the side opposite the right angle is, what is the side opposite this angle? B. What's the side opposite this angle? A. A. If you know the side opposite an angle, we're at a good step. Tomorrow, I'm going to talk about the word adjacent. Does anyone know what the word adjacent means? Yes. Yeah, next to each other. Next to each other. Touching each other, next to each other. We'll talk about that tomorrow. So that's your, that's your trick for the day. We're going to go tomorrow. We're going to add just one next piece. We'll just add a little pieces, then we'll get to it. Okay, I have a question about this answer, though. We said 1 and negative 7. 
Wasn't I trying to find what this number was? Yeah. And you gave me two things. It could be. No. No. No, yeah, and I'm very curious now, but let me show you something. I drew it out. It was chapter three. Oh, sorry, four dash three, sorry. Uh, Do you guys see here that was the negative three, negative two? And then we said that A could be two answers. We said it could be negative seven and positive one. Do you see if A was negative seven, you'd get negative seven, negative five right here? Or if A were positive one, you'd get one, negative five? These two points are equidistant from that point, right? They're five away from these points right there. So it could be two. Should you fax that? Fax? Yeah, as soon as I write something, it goes right to the board. No, it doesn't. Not that, not that cool. Okay, your homework. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, it was seven and negative one. It's both. Whatever we got, A equals seven to negative one, or negative it seven, positive one. Two. It can be. It can't be. Yes, negative, no, it can't be one to negative seven. Oh, oh, thank you. I, is that yours? Okay. Can you leave it on your desk? I'll pick it up. Yeah, listen up. Right here, this is the A value, negative seven, negative five, right here. And this is your one, negative five. Both of these points are five away from this guy. I know, it's really cool. Oh. <laughs> um, you sound like my son. Ezra, it's blue outside. Uh, I don't think so. Like, okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, go ahead and write your homework and then goodbye. So